Okay, let's go ahead and get started for today. So today we will be um, finishing out our children's dress shirt. We will be marking our button and buttonholes and then talking about finishing touches of cleaning everything up, pressing and steaming our collar into the appropriate shape. So let's go ahead and switch over and we'll get started. Okay, over here we have our dress shirt. At this point, you should have both sleeves on and um, cuffs on, hem done, all of that good stuff. So we're ready to do our button and button holes. So the first one we're going to mark is we're gonna do the cuff over here. So I've got my sleeve. For this one, you'll have two parts of your cuff. You have the top part where that bias strip has been folded back. That's the one that's gonna sit on top. And then the one where the bias strip is sticking off the edge is going to sit on bottom. So let's go ahead and grab our pattern piece. This is what we're gonna to use to mark those buttonholes and buttons. Okay, so I'm going to single out that top part first. So just lay that nice and flat on my table. And the top is where the buttonhole is going to go. So I'm gonna to have to turn this over so that I can match up that corner. So one sleeve, you'll use the front of the pattern piece to mark, and then the other sleeve, you'll use the back. So this happens to be the one where I'm gonna use the back. So I've already got my drill holes on either side of my button hole. And then I've got my drill hole going right through the center of where my button will be. That way I can see it as I flip it over. Now on the cuff, we need to make sure that we're lining up the edge of our cuff with the solid line on the inside of our piece. That's where the finished cuff should sit. This edge is our seam allowance, which has already been stitched. So that's disappeared. We need to line it up with that solid line. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's line it on up. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my awl to punch through both sides. And then I can double check it before I start to mark it. Those two drill holes um, should be even right in the middle from top to bottom of the cuff. So the gap on the top and the gap on the bottom should be even. They should be sitting right in the middle as far as um, the vertical placement goes. As far as the horizontal placement goes, um, they're gonna be closer to the edge. Let me go ahead and grab my ruler and my chalk so we can connect those two. And then I'm gonna mark each end. So I have that capital I that's on its side. And again, that should go horizontal in line with the edge of our cuff. So it shouldn't be at a slant. Okay, on the other side, we're gonna mark our drill hole for our button. So again, line up the edge of your cuff with the solid line on your pattern piece. If you need to, you can even fold that back. Let's see, I'll go ahead and do that to show you. Okay, so I folded both of my seam allowances back out of the way so I can match it up with the edge. And then I'm gonna push through that drill hole. And on my fabric, it's gonna be hard to see that drill hole just because it's black. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with a little crosshair. There we go. So right in the center of that crosshair is where my drill hole is. And that's where I'll put my button in just a minute. Okay, next we're gonna mark our popover placket. So here we've got the front of our placket. That top piece is where, again, the buttonholes are gonna go. And then the bottom piece is where the buttons will go. So for this one, we have the markers. I'm gonna grab just that top layer 
of the placket, move the bottom layer out of the way, match up my marker and I'm paying attention to the bottom. I want that point to line up. And then again, I'm going to trace off those drill holes on either end. And I'll connect those dots to create my buttonholes. I'm gonna turn it on its side so I can use my ruler to connect those. And again, those should go right down the center of that placket. So they shouldn't be further left or further right. They should be right down the center. Okay, let's mark our buttonhole that's up here on the extension of our collar. So for that one, I'm gonna use my collar piece. And again, the seam allowances are, we're going to eliminate. So the edge of our fabric needs to line up with that solid line where our seam allowance was marked. And again, I can fold that up if I need to, to make it a little easier to find the corner. Okay, so this is the placement of the one that's on our collar. And the difference on the horizontal and the vertical. So we have the vertical ones going down that placket. And if you ever see like a dress shirt, typically going down center front, they're all vertical. Part of that is because of space. We have this narrow placket. And if we have horizontal buttonholes, they won't fit inside there very well but also part of that is because of the tension. The majority of the tension is coming up here to this top one. That's where the neck is um, you know, pulling apart the shirt. So we need this horizontal one so that the button can shift over to the side as the pieces of the shirt are being pulled apart. And then the button can't go any further. With these, there's less tension. And if you put high tension on a vertical buttonhole, then the button would just end up slipping out and it would come unbuttoned. So horizontal buttonholes are a little bit more um, secure, which is why we've got that one up there at the top. And if you'll notice placement wise, the right hand side where the button is going to sit of that horizontal buttonhole, that right hand side should be in line with your other buttonholes. That way when our buttons are sitting right in the center of these two, it'll be in line with the button that's sitting off to the right of the horizontal buttonhole. Okay, let's mark our buttons on the underside. So I've got, this is the side that sits underneath. I'm gonna use my marker first. Again, we want that bottom portion to sit right where that seam is. So I'm pushing that bottom portion as far down as I can. And then I'm going to trace off those button holes, or buttons, sorry, the drill holes for the buttons. Okay, and then to double check that before I start stitching anything, what I want you to do is place those two over each other, just like they were about to close. So top goes on top of bottom and double check those drill holes that you put on bottom. Uh, but when I go through the center of this buttonhole right here, it should uh, it should be right where the drill hole is placed on the other side. So check that placement, put one right on top of the other, stick your drill hole through, and as long as it's coming out where that other drill hole is, then you've got good placement of your button, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and mark those with little crosshairs so we can see them a little easier. Okay, 
So there's my two buttonholes. The last one we need to mark is that buttonhole, or sorry, button at the top of our collar. And again, this should be directly in line with the other ones. All three should line up vertically. Okay, now we're gonna go stitch our buttonholes. So I'm going to, just to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this horizontal one and one of the vertical ones. The second one, you'll just do the same process. And then I'll stitch the one on our cuff. Okay, so I've got mine already set up for a buttonhole. So on my machine, I have this special buttonhole foot that has these little red and green markings that tell me where to line up my I, my capital I. Um, I always want you to do a test first to make sure that your buttonhole function is working properly and that you remember what order this is going to go in. So mine, for instance, starts at the bottom of the eye and works its way backwards. Some machines start at the top and work their way down. Some machines go from uh, left to right around the circle. Some go the opposite way. So just make sure that you know what order this is going in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do on a scrap piece of fabric through two layers. So I have it folded in half. I'm gonna go ahead and do a test buttonhole just to make sure everything is working properly before I do it on my final garment. I've switched my stitch over to my buttonhole function. So just checking that, mine is really nice and dense, very secure, and it looks like it's working properly. So now I can do it on my final garment. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this collar one first. Again, mine starts at the bottom of the eye and works up. So I'm gonna line up the bottom of the eye with these little crosshairs on the center of my Your machine should do the majority of the work for you. So I'm not pushing and pulling my fabric through the machine. I'm just help, helping guide it and make sure that it stays straight so that it doesn't tilt as I'm going. Okay, so there's my buttonhole, a little hard to see on the black on black, but there's my buttonhole for the collar or for the, yeah, collar. I'm gonna do one vertical one for the pocket.
on that one. Okay, there we go. So there is my vertical buttonhole. Okay, let's go do our one for our cup. And again, you'll do both cups, but I'm just doing one for today. And there is my buttonhole for my cup. Okay, let's go ahead. We're going to open one of these up and then we'll talk about stitching on our button. Okay, so to open one of these up, we want to be very careful. Oops, wrong side. Here we go. We want to be very careful not to cut any of our stitching. So I'm going to place a pin on either end so that I don't accidentally cut too far past the end point of my um, buttonhole. So you can do this with your seam ripper. You can start on one end and then seam rip up to the other end, or you can do this with your scissors or your shears. So they need to be very sharp if you are using shears. So fold it in half, and then you can take a small snip right through the center. And then that'll give you a big enough hole to be able to get your shears in there and cut to either end. So some people prefer using their shears because it gives them a little bit more control. So if you're worried about accidentally cutting through your stitches, make sure to use this method. Okay, and then to stitch on our button. Right here over my crosshair, I'm gonna start with a needle and thread and I've got my thread two ply. So you can see I've got two ends here. They're folded in half and both of the tails meet up. So I'm stitching with two pieces of thread at a time. Take a small stitch right over the center of that drill hole. We're gonna stitch in place several times to tie off the end of our thread. And then we're gonna get our button and we need a spacer because remember we need to leave that space, that gap between the fabric and our button, which is called a shank. So I'm going to put my toothpick right there to keep that gap for me. And then I can thread my button onto it, onto my needle and thread. And we can go back and forth. This one just has two holes. So I'm gonna go back and forth between the two. If you have four holes, you can either do two lines or you can do an X for your stitching. But the back of your um, back of your cuff, the stitching that's showing on the back of your cuff needs to be as neat as the front. So always check the back and make sure that you're going in and out of the same hole. We're gonna do this quite a few times, probably 10 times to make sure that it's durable enough because these buttons will get a lot of wear and tear as the person puts on and takes off their, their shirt. And we don't want them to break and pop off. Okay, once you've got that secure enough, you're going to come up to the surface, but do not go through the button. So you can see my needle there is not going through the button. Then take out your spacer and wrap your thread around that gap. So I'm gonna pull back my fabric, let that button stand off the edge and wrap my thread around that gap to create the thread shank. 
And that's what helps the button stand off the surface of your shirt. And then we're gonna go through the fabric to the back and we'll stitch in place to tie off. Okay, so now we should have a working button. When we button our cuff, it should line up the top edge of your cuff and the bottom edge of your cuff should line up perfectly. If that's not the case, then your button may be placed too high or too low. So if your cuff is not matching up, you may need to take your button off move the placement and uh, get those two to line up, okay? And then same with your placket. Whenever you button those up, looking at our placket up top, whenever you button them, your placket should still be one laying right on top of the other. They shouldn't be shifting left or right. And, um, and they shouldn't be bubbling. So if your button was accidentally placed too high or too low, it may be pulling to where you end up with this like gap or bubble. Either it's sticking up bubbling or it, the top one is pulled to where there's a bubble on the bottom. Okay, so making sure that your, plate, your button placement is right in the center of those buttonholes is important for it to line up properly. Okay, the last thing we need to talk about is pressing. I'm gonna zoom out. So pressing, we want to steam and press our shirt to make sure that all of these wrinkles come out. Cotton especially, it wrinkles really badly. So you can use the steam function on your iron or if you don't, if your iron, uh, my iron in particular likes to drip. So I don't like to do the steam function. Instead, I use a spray bottle and then iron it to get all of those wrinkles out. You're also welcome to use starch. So if you wanna spray a little bit of starch, don't go overboard, but you can spray a little bit of starch on there to help keep your fabric nice and crisp. And then we're gonna talk about steaming our collar. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my ham in here to simulate a neck. I've got my collar sticking up right now. I need to put, I'm gonna button all of my buttons. So I'm gonna pin it right now since I don't have buttons to button. But button all of your buttons to make sure that those are lining up properly. And then right at that corner where it turns from collar into extension, we're going to fold that down. And we're gonna do that the whole way around. So this extension that will stick up around the entire neck. So it's about an inch, maybe a little less, right where that crease is, that's going to stick up around the entire neck. So don't fold it all the way down to the seam. You're just folding it down to where that um, corner is. Okay, let's do the same on the back. Okay, so once we have that buttoned and folded down, then we need to again, steam it, steam this top fold to keep it in place. So don't press your iron to the fabric because we don't want a hard crease. You can use the steam function on your iron to help just heat up that fabric. And then once you have it heated up, then we're going to let it cool down in this shape. So I'm not gonna take it off of my ham until it's fully cooled. Okay, and that way we can press that shape into the collar. 